Jennifer. Hi, Richard. How are you? I am great. I'm actually at my home office today. Your home office. How many offices do you have? I have Dose, amigos. Dose. <laughs> Okay. Yes. I've had a dose of your office and I love your office. We love I that do ocean. Love my, I do love my office, but my house has an ocean view as well. But we, um, I had one client, I have, well, I have several clients today, but one client was going to come in and then she, she got a hold of my assistant and said, can I come in? Can I do it by Zoom? And I'm like, well, I'm just going to do it here then. Makes sense. You know, people complain about Zoom, except it certainly cuts down on the drive time. Well, if nobody's, if nobody's home, why not? Do I know, and my commute from my office is upstairs. I just have to walk out for, watch out for traffic on the stairway, especially, you know, with my new hip. I love that though. Very yeah. funny. All right, now, before we started, uh, you mentioned, and you didn't say who? Nope. And so here we are, look, for people who are tuning in for the first time or the last time, <laughs> or somewhere in the middle. Um, Jennifer and I have been doing this for five or six years where we meet up like okay. once a week, if we can. And about a year ago, because of the pandemic, we started doing this online. Just it made more sense, it was easier to do. And we don't plan anything. No. Nope. And we've discovered, well, I think we discovered that having a conversation, the two of us with my weird brain and her weird talents, we can access people on the other side. I've had a number of people write to me recently, publicists saying, you know, we'd really like to get on your podcast. You know, my client, an author wants to be on your podcast. And I say, well, generally we interview people who are no longer on the planet. So if they die, get up. <laughs> so yeah, tell them to get in line. They got to get to our friend, Luana Anders, who is our, uh, really our teacher kind of on the flip side, who has helps us. Luana passed away in 1996, close friend. Anyone who's seen Hacking the Afterlife knows my journey of how I met her, et cetera, et cetera. That's the documentary on Gaia. Gaia. But by the so, way, yeah, documentary on Gaia. So many of my clients, my new clients, that's where they've come from because of that documentary. Really? And it resonated with them. And it was amazing. Yeah, it was, it's wonderful what just everything that, everything that you put into this work, Richard, I can't thank you enough. Well, thank you for saying so. And I've had some people write that, you know, uh, you know, it's always funny because you I spent 10 years filming various people, as we know, you know, and, and doing this research and not always in settings like this, sometimes in coffee shops and noisy cafes. I consider it lightning in a bottle. The background I come from is improvisational comedy. So I know that you can create something out of nothing uh, and you just have to have a camera to catch it. But anyway, that being said, you know, there are people who don't, they don't like the format. It's just too noisy. There's too many things to read. But I think of it, and I try to tell people, look, if you didn't get it the first time, watch it again. You know, you've already paid to be yeah. on this Gaia service. Um, and watch it again and watch it slowly because there's a lot of information in there. Tons anyway, and it's not my information. I'm literally editing people like Jennifer showing how talented they are accessing people on the other side. Well, it just my I love the clients that come from it, from this podcast and from, so I'm very grateful. But so I, I was not thinking of course, and someone popped in to my head and it was Anthony Bourdain. Oh, very, very and good. Know, Wait a minute, where did this happen? Where so, did it pop into your head? In the shower. Okay. Anthony? So Okay. <laughs> I was always asked Luana, like when I'm in the show, I'm like, hey, make sure everybody's there, you know, our class that we have set up. And then I, you know, all of a sudden he popped into my head and I'm like, okay, so you want to say something. I, I went through my process because I wrote something on your Facebook page yesterday when you said something about Anthony Bourdain, I think. Yeah, there was a, that documentary has come out. And so right. I think I know why he wants to talk to us, but go ahead. So I, I know that that documentary is coming out. I know, so I went through my conscious mind going, did I think it? I'm like, no, I didn't really think of Anthony Bourdain when I was in the shower. Nope, you know, nope. <laughs> um, so 
I know that he's here and he thought he felt like he was just like, we got to talk about something. And so I'm sure it had to do with that. I don't know, but let's very good. Listen, you know, you and I have been doing this for so long and it was a year ago. It was like July 17th of last year that he showed up at the set around this time period. Cause I had just happened to notice that the blog posts that we did or the blog, uh, our blog podcast was July uh, of last year around this time. And, you know, maybe this is the time he likes to show up, but I, I suspect. And so let's I, ask him. He likes to show up when he tells you to eat your green beans. He just showed me that. You, well, you know, I must say there was a time and I was thinking to myself, I need to figure a health trick. And he came through to you and said, tell Richard to eat green beans. I was like, what? But the idea of the fiber and all that stuff, it really helps your system. But Anthony. First and foremost, let's say, welcome, sir. You know how many people miss you on the planet. We miss you on the planet. Um, right. We've had conversations with you before. I know I asked you about who was there to greet you when you crossed over, and you talked about uh, the chef, Loiseau, your friend, who had also checked himself out early. Um, but let's talk about why you're here, sir. What would you like to talk about? He just grabbed a seat. And he's eating something, something like a piece of bread. Um, and for people who are curious, like, how could that be over there? They can construct anything, anything that you can imagine. A piece of like French bread. But I'm like sure baguette. That, yeah, baguette. Yeah. He's in Paris. Okay. Did you get your baguette fresh in Paris today? He said, I made it fresh today. You made it, thank you. Very good. Why he was in Paris, yeah. He made While it. he was in Paris. And let me just ask you, sir, was that a talent you always had making baguette or is that something you've learned since you've been on the flip side? He, it's not something he knew how to construct here. Huh. Not that he had interest in doing so. He says he was more interested in like the Asian Thai cuisine, like that kind of thing. Yeah, cuisine. yeah. But know. since you're crossing over now, you're able to construct the perfect, or is it perfect? He's just make, he says it's perfect. He's just making me smell it. I'm like, that's really not fair. Um, that's beautiful. It's beautiful. Like if you could, you know, the crumb, like, just even the crumbling part of it. like The sound of it, the crunch. It. Yeah, so I forget what chef it was. Oh, Might have been him. That the sound of the bread is really what identifies baguette from I anything else. With, I even checked like my hunger. I'm not even hungry, but he <laughs> me through all this stuff and I could smell the butter that I would have. And he makes sure that it's salted butter. So it's salted butter. That's not why he's here. He just thought that was- something. No, no, and it's a wonderful introduction to you, yeah. sir. Go ahead. What would you? What do you want to talk about? I have some questions for you, and it's up to you if you want to talk first or if you want to answer questions. He wants to talk first. Please. Um. <laughs> and because I asked Luana, it was his way to jump into the shower. <laughs> no pun intended, <laughs> but into my mind. You guys have to understand. They don't sit there and look at me while I'm in the shower. They're not. It's nothing like that. I just want to clarify this. Um. Not that even have to, I'm sorry. I well, we've to talked about that. The uh, water apparently is a conductivity of a energy conductivity. and frequency and, and whatever. I, and I opened up the conversation by asking Luana to be here with the class. And so he jumped in. Um, so he says he just wasn't invading my privacy, but he's like, really is, do you want to talk about privacy now? Or I'm like, no, go, 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 hold on. Okay. Wow, he said they really hurt me and how they're misinforming the audience about how I conducted my internal being. Okay, uh, do you know what he's referring to? I do. I'm, I'm pretty sure it must have been that thing that the movie. 
I guess. Yeah, it's a documentary that uh, somebody made, a filmmaker made about his life and tried to piece together on some level why, and this is what people do. And he's showing me though, he goes, he's like, I did it because I was inadequately informed that you could. End it all. Yeah, so. Wait, let's clarify that, sir. Wait, 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 wait one second, because he's talking, I just need to. Go ahead, I'm sorry. <laughs> he's the interviewer, I better be quiet. He says he didn't know how to enjoy himself thoroughly. He did a lot of things because he, you were told to do them or you're supposed to do them. He, cause he, I believe he's the producer of his shows. I'm not sure. But he said that um, it just wasn't enough. It just wasn't enough. But that the way that they portrayed him, he's showing me like, they got information from secondhand, thirdhand, fourthhand, fifthhand people, not the people close to me. Okay, very good. And in along I those, know, I don't know uh, that. I, I'm aware of it. Are, along those lines, uh, let's be specific. Uh, I think the filmmaker accuses or tries to point to your friend Asia, your old girlfriend, as being a catalyst for you doing yourself in. And I know you have told us that's not accurate. What's your you could not ever make me do anything like that. She would have been a reason to stay. Why didn't you leave us a, a note about the reasons? I didn't even know them myself. You did not know them yourself. And, and you were under the impression. It was a feeling. It wasn't. I understand. And you were under the impression of ending it all, that, that your action would end. But what you realize, correct me if I'm wrong, that nothing ended. No, in fact, it got way more complicated. How so? I had to hear all the people that were hurting because I left. I see. You had to experience all the trauma that they no, went through. There was no logical explanation or there was no uh, reasonable explanation into why I left. So for those people now who... They're making, now they're making a mockery of a movie claiming that they know when I didn't even know why I left. So your review of this movie... On a scale of one to 10, thumbs down, two thumbs down. Do we even get into the numbers or are we negative here? It's a five. It's a five. All right. Well, that's very generous of you. Well, only because only based upon the information that was known. Okay. Stuff that had already been filmed and shot. What's your opinion of this filmmaker? taking a, a artificial intelligence and creating your voice, recreating your voice. He took some words out of one of your books and had an, uh, some kind of algorithm make the, your voice. What do you, what's your opinion about that? He's just laughing. <laughs> um, he said, I found it not as amusing as I thought it would be. <laughs> Not as amusing as it should have been because you're a funny guy. Let's start there. I appreciate that comment. I sound what, like a robot. And what, what about what uh, like a robot? So the idea of hearing your voice like that's supposed to be you, but it's there not you. There's no like jiving. There's no like, you know, he goes, there's no movement with it. He goes, rah, rah, rah. It's Charlie. Yeah, I, I haven't heard it. So I, I, don't, I don't know. It's the it's reason I won't watch the film. But also there's, it uh, just came out that, that the ending was uh, fake was was created falsely because an artist had suggested of doing a mural of I guess Anthony and then defacing it after being angry that he had checked off the planet and then they recreate that which never happened but at the end of the film this artist who creates a mural just so he can deface it for the movie what's your opinion of that sir shitty Okay, Anthony Bourdain. This is his review. I'm going to put it in quotes. Hold on one, hold on one second. 
<laughs> because that guy has anger issues. The filmmaker or the artist? All the of painter. Them. All of them. All of them. <laughs> anger. Well, all right, but let's. When you're trying so hard to get an answer. He's like, when you're trying so hard, he goes, you make up shit. You make up shit. He and goes, this I did. He goes, that's what I did to leave. And he goes, none of it's true. None of it's real. None of it's real. Very good. So even the reasons that you thought you had to leave were not real. No, no. Those were all mind made. Mental constructs. Mind made. Thinking I was going out on top. And Asia, I happen to notice that Asia uh, Argento wrote something about her love for you. Again, you know, eternal, beyond measure, et cetera, et cetera, even though she was- a She is the reason I would have stayed. And so if you could just maybe a message for her, not that she's gonna watch this podcast or hear it, but in case. He says that she listens to me. She talk. She doesn't, she, okay. So then how does she listen to you? Sleeping, perhaps? Yeah, actually she's had dreams. Because I, he's saying like, she's not talking to him, but she's listening. But she's listening. I and think- he told her that everything's okay, that he's okay. That he's okay. He's reassured her in the dreams that none of this other stuff is real that they're going to say. Very good. And I think people can all identify with that. We've all seen loved ones in dreams and heard things from them and then wake up and dismiss it or deny it or act like it didn't happen. But the idea of opening yourself up to the possibility is key that maybe you did hear from them. Um, so, so this filmmaker has now taken your life and I you know I don't know what word you'd like to use. What word would you what would you like to say to this filmmaker other than he has anger amateur. issues? Say again? <laughs> amateur is the first Ooh, word. <laughs> amateur. Um I understand. I mean hold on a second. Hold on. He just got it wrong. He tried to put a tack in a square hole or vice versa or whatever it is. That's I understand. All right. <clears throat> and if we may, you know, let's pretend for a moment that the filmmakers, the genesis of his idea of like, I'd really like to make a film about my hero, Anthony. And of course, so many people love you and still do. But if you can give people some insight, either into how to prevent this from happening, or meditation, Meditation. We've Very talked good. about that. And uh, let me ask you, Jennifer, what, what do you mean when you say Jennifer, Jennifer uh, meditation? Are you seeing a, a monk meditating? No, no, he just says meditation. Meditation. And we've talked about this. I know that that's not my first go to <laughs> when I think of trying not to. No, but we have. He has brought it up before. And I, I know you don't hey, remember. Oh, 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 OK. That's what he should have done. He says, take inventory of your loved ones. Take inventory of people that don't even know you that love you. Take inventory of the ground that you walk on, the air that you breathe, you know, and know that it's the best that life has to give. Like keep doing it over and over and over again. Gratitude for where your dog or your cat or you know, whatever it is, you can find something. You can look at a leaf and find it beautiful and being grateful for the tree that provided the air in our space. Hold on. Um, it's my puppy dog coming in. Oh. I'm grateful for my little puppy dog. <laughs> hi, Chloe. Say hi. Say hi, Chloe. Say hi to Anthony. <laughs> She always, there she goes. Hi, Chloe. Hi, Chloe. Take a break. Um, that idea of having gratitude, a meditation on gratitude. A med, 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 med means measure in Latin. It's not some kind of esoteric thing. It's literally thinking about what's going on. And you're saying that's a good thing to do, especially when people are depressed. 
It's an instant energy booster. So you can find something to be grateful for, whether it's just your skin, you know, or find just, gratitude. Is that what you're what you're saying? If you find gratitude in anything, you'll have a less likely chance of leaving. Very good. We've talked about meditation Our, before. He said, I was humble. I loved what I did for work. I couldn't have asked for a better career. I just didn't know how to take it all in and feel it. We asked you this before in terms of your drug use as a younger person. Did that affect your ability, your amygdala? So it affected your ability to regulate serotonin and emotions. And, but we also have to allow that you chose your lifetime. Had you, had you, and once you got back to the flip side, did you see this exit as an exit point or was it a mis terrible mistake? I'm just curious. It's hard for people to hear that, but it's in the research. It's not a mistake. Part of the journey. Let me ask you this, sir. Uh, this popped into my head. So this action that you went through, as traumatic as it was for many, is this a way to help people to address depression on the planet? Is this almost like a lesson that you can give from where you are? Yes, absolutely. So this is like a teaching. He just showed me going here and going over there that it's an exchange. The fact that they can go through us to give helps tremendously. If everyone knew that they can hear their loved ones or hear people they don't even know from the flip side, as you would say, the world would be automatically elevated because everyone over there wants to help everyone here. I know that we, go ahead. Wow. I'm like, do we look like dumb idiots over here compared to over there? And he goes, no. He goes, what you do look like, just in general, he's generally speaking, is that you do look like you are wasting time in living your life. So you're wasting time living your life. Wasting, you mean wasting your time? No. Yeah having difficulty with with living like kids in a sandbox you can walk by the sandbox and everybody it's just like the the you know um what is it what's wasted on the young yeah youth is wasted on the young right but that idea of that people get so caught up in their trauma so let's say you're in a kids in a sandbox throwing toys upset angry they focus on that as opposed to the adults walking by and looking in on the sandbox saying, gee, I wish they would just get along because they're just so much more to enjoy. Is it something like that you're saying? Exactly like that. Okay. So it's an unusual- It's, interchange it's interchangeable stages. You know, one day you're in Europe, the next day you're in America, the next day you're in, in well, the Indian reservation. He goes, it's interchangeable, just like time is. Like time is. It's gonna ask you that. We, I, I don't think we've spoken to you directly, maybe for a year, maybe six months, I don't know. But for you, what does that feel like? Does that feel like 10 seconds ago? Or? No, you said three weeks ago and yesterday, by the way. Oh, okay. So, all right. So yesterday you hooked up with Jennifer, snagged her. Well, he, <laughs> he did that today. I'm saying he, oh. yesterday. Um, he said that he was there with you when you were looking at it. Oh, okay. When I was looking at this, I wasn't thinking about him being on our podcast, honestly, mainly because I, either. I wasn't either. It just, and, but I did look it up because I wanted to know when the last time we spoke and to him. Then I forgot about it, of course. And then he popped back in again to show. To tell him to show and him. the podcast that I, that I reposted, I didn't call it. I didn't use his name in the title. I had to look for it, but it was about exiting early. And Robin Williams showed up. It's his birthday today. Robin, of course, you're always welcome to chat with us. But yeah, 
So, and Anthony, I mean, listen, I, the reason I posted it is because there are people who are still, I mean, look, of course, everyone's trying to figure out why you left the planet early. I think you pretty much gave us a very eloquent uh, explanation that I would hope that filmmakers in the future would come to you directly, use mediums, use hypnotherapy, use meditation to access the person you want to talk about, ask them what they want to express, ask them to show you what they want to express. So at least you have a sense of like, well, wait a second, maybe there's more. I don't know if you had talked about maybe there's more in some of your work, but I'll bet you did. Right. So that would be what you'd focus on. You know, let's focus on talking to Anthony instead of talking about Anthony like he's a chrysalis at the end of a caterpillar's life. He's a butterfly and he's available. What did he do that was wrong? He's like, he just didn't know me. Didn't yeah, know. just didn't know you. But also he had the mental idea that life ends in death as you did. And he thought maybe I could understand why someone might end their life early based on whatever. And all of those things inaccurate, all of those things wrong, even manipulated things wrong, as opposed to talking to him directly. Yeah, that's interesting. He, what, would, uh, what would you like to say to your fans listening in? Well, Robin says thank you for all the birthday wishes. He just came in. <laughs> You're welcome, Robin. Thank you. They had a lot in common with not being able to feel. And I think it. I think some of it had to do with the early drug use. I don't know, but Robin. I mean Robin's as well. Well, he. Whatever. Well, let's well, let's ask him. Go ahead, Robin. Did that affect your amygdala and serotonin release? No. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you. By the way, your son today was uh, talking about you. I just happened to catch a glimpse yeah. of the article. Sorry, I'm like. No. Yeah. Well, what you know, if it's true, it's true. We're not going to put words in his mouth. But yeah, your son, if you're on heroin, he's he just so if you're on heroin, you're going to die. Yeah, it's going to affect you. It's going to affect your amygdala. Your right. son was talking about the fact that the misdiagnosis that you had in your lifetime affected you because they gave you drugs that were deleterious to your mental state that led you down that path in a more direct route. Anything you want to say to your son? Don't take them. Don't take those drugs. He was laughing about that. Hold on. <laughs> I'm really proud of him. And I know he struggles with his own mental. As like, we all do, issues. Yeah. And he said Emotional. That, Thanks for bringing your mom through it. To the other side into believing that I really cared for her. They feel bad because the people that they leave, and this should be another reason why I don't leave the planet, because they can't help but think, what did I do wrong? What is it that I could have done better when it had nothing to do with them? And that stupid movie is making it out like it did. Right, in Anthony's case. Like, but also in Robin's case, because... That's the reason why I would have stayed. But also in Robin's case, because they misdiagnosed what was going on, and they gave him drugs that made him lose his ability to focus rather than, well, whatever, whatever it was that happened. Uh, he says it was a big combination of a, oh my gosh, <laughs> a big combination of everything. <laughs> okay. You can't even quote him because he's that naughty. Okay, but, <laughs> you know, Robin, the most powerful thing we've heard you say uh, was when I asked Jennifer to ask you directly for, no, just for people who aren't aware of this, I had taken a chapter about Robin out of a book that I had written. I didn't tell anybody that. And Jennifer, when I were doing a session, she said, Robin, Siri, why don't you put the chapter back in? I was completely blown away. And then when the book came on, I asked him for a quote, and his eloquent quote was, love 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 the idea that you should it's a verb it's a noun it's everything it's all there is if you can love love you can love yourself okay what's he saying he's making you laugh is he doing it as mrs doubtfire it's he just said it's kind of like the f word but nicer <laughs> okay 
all right, we like that. You know, that's the great thing about Robin. He can turn even the most poignant. Yes, that can turn into love. That can, I hope. <laughs> one, not gonna yeah. one would hope, right? That was weird. I tapped my head and everything shook. Um, so Robin, are you hanging out with Anthony? Are you guys hanging out? Do you chat? Do you goof around? What? Yeah, there's a big celebration for his birthday up there. And for Anthony Bourdain being there. Oh, by the way, have you seen our friend Charles Grodin, Robin? How did I not see him? <laughs> Very still, good. Still going. He, Charles is with a mic up there. He's like, I'm still doing a better job than you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's true. He he was the best talk show host. Charles did say that you had a dream about him. I did. And he said that it was a really cool dream. It was. Yeah. It was very, uh, it was right around the time I had my hip re really young. You guys were really young in the dream, he said. Ah. He showed me like when he actually showed me the clip of that video when you were on TV with him. Oh, okay. The Merv show, which yeah. is in the movie Hacking the Afterlife. I oh okay that's cool I all I can tell you is yes that's accurate I had a dream about Chuck it was right around the time I had my hip replaced and I was in the hospital and he was telling me you know everything's okay and part of the journey and other hilarious things that you know the guy really knew how to make me laugh yeah. and I knew how to make him laugh too so that was really a fun lots and lots and lots and lots of laughs Are by you, the way can I get one of his animals. Well, oh, you you forget, but his he has animals in his backyard. Remember, there, there are all these animatronic kind of things that talk. Yeah. I I spoke to your friend Paul, uh, Chuck, and I noted that you had told us, and this was after the podcast. You, I had asked if you had any message for your friend Paul, and you said, "Tell Paul not to worry about his last song because his last song is not his last song," and that would be Paul Simon, who Chuck was very close to. Um, so I wrote to Paul and I said, you know, I don't know what your opinion is about the flip side, but this is the message I got from Chuck via Jennifer. And he wrote back and said, Richard, you have no idea how accurate that comment is. I win. And he said, it's uncanny that you would say it. Well, oh, he says he won. He goes, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. It or anything, uh, you know, but here's the and it's a weird thing because I'm telling you that I got an email from him, and I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to share that, I can't, it's not fair. But this is what Jennifer and I do we work with experience and people who have experiences, and we allow them to share their experiences. And by looking at a whole conglomerate of experiences, you get the sense, oh my gosh, it is possible. It's possible. But you have to experience it yourself. You can't believe it because somebody like Rich or Jennifer or Chuck or anybody says, oh, you know, life goes on. Or Anthony. Right. Anyways, so to, uh, I don't want me to steal the spotlight from Robin or Anthony. Anthony, Robin, you guys want to arm wrestle for... Or Chuck. Or Prince. Or Prince. Okay. It's a it's a quorum. Hold on. <laughs> They're just so funny. I can't even say it on air. Hold on. <laughs> he said for you to Prince has said for you to change your guitar string. You know, of course he would say that because yesterday I bought my son a pair of strings for his Martin. And I we were talking about, we've got to change hey, these strings. You showed me your son, and then I saw Eddie Vedder, and it was just a quick loop. And so I didn't know it. What... Same hair, same hair. Same hair Eddie had when he was about 20. My son has that hair. Um, yeah, time to change those strings. But Prince, if I may, mm -hmm. tuning up tuning we all need to change our strings we all need to be in tune with each other getting rid of the old ones that no longer serve you because you've grown your fingers have grown You're your fingers have grown your heart has grown the yeah. frequency that we share that is the subject of one of my next books uh tuning 
into the folks on the other side and talking about music and talking about prints and talking about resonance and frequency and how those kinds of things, if we open ourselves up to them, it helps us to communicate. Now, do you want to mention, do you want to talk about it at all? What you just showed me is and sometimes those strings stay so tight that they're just going to break anyway. Like they're so tightly wound and that if you keep on holding on, they're going to break. So you, you, so you loosen them up. There's a, yeah, I think we've talked about that with somebody, a slack. It's like the right the right amount of tension mm -hmm. so that you get a resonant note. Oh, uh, it may have been this discussion. I'm sorry to quote Prince, but it may have been discussion about Buddha talking about how a string is, if it's too tight, it'll break. And if it's too loose, you don't get a sound. So it's got to be the middle way, right. which is the Buddhist uh, concept. That idea of being not too tightly wound and not too slack but some kind of resonant way you can access people that you love. The strings of love. Yeah. Okay. Um, Luana. You have to go. Huh? I know I have to, I'm the one who has to go today, but we got a couple of minutes. Luana, is there anything you want to weigh in on my dear? Oh, by the way, your movie Greaser's Palace was showing up the block from me the other day. And she just kissed you on your forehead and said that you're going to be okay. So I, I assume that has to do with your head. But you don't know. Know. Did, you get, did you have to get your heart checked on? <laughs> no, no, uh, no, I'm sure I'm going to be okay. I appreciate that. But you know, but Lou, back to, back to this awful movie, Greaser's Palace, which was edited by Bud Smith, a dear friend, and made by Robert Downey Jr.'s father, Robert Downey Sr., remember Robert talking about this in one of his interviews. And Luana starred in it. Well, she was supposed to start it. She was the third lead, but it was edited so terribly. It's, I don't know, it was, an, can I say unwatchable? I don't know. It was pretty unwatchable, except for the Luana parts, which I thought she was fantastic. But anyway, you and I discussed this when you were still on the planet about how that you had shot these incredible scenes and then they had burp, 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 chopped them all up. Any opinion? Have you talked to Robert Downey Sr.? He can't hear really well. So is he over here? Is Robert yes, he just checked out about two weeks ago. So he's not quite there yet. Okay, hold on. No, he's there. He said it was ridiculous. The movie? No, the way that it was. Um, oh, <laughs> he's crossing over? No, not him crossing over, but how the movie was edited. Oh. He wasn't in his right mind when everything was going on. Yes, and the way I've heard it was there were mountains of little alpine mountains of white snow on the editing bay while they were editing it. And so it was loopy. Yeah. It was what was it like for you to see Luana when you crossed over? Pleasant. Old times. We were by a pool at a party. Not quite sure when. 1960. 1960s party. And like 1964. Who was who was there to greet you? Was it a family member or somebody else? My mother. My father. And I felt, I felt like either his him and his father were estranged i don't know but it just felt like he felt a lot of love a lot of love i understand i think i think that was the case he you know because he was like an original hippie filmmaker i think he stepped in a lot of toes uh in the establishment could have been his father but once you crossed over you were met with a lot of love anything for your son robert we didn't have anything unsaid you didn't have anything unsaid that's beautiful we repaired everything. That's beautiful. That you're so lucky. I had a lot of repairing because all I did was put band-aids on everything. And he goes and just ripped the whole house down. Like he showed me band-aids being put on a house. And then he's show me again. I'm very proud of my boy. He's gone through quite a journey in his life as well. I don't know why he's now sober. I know Robert's sober. 
I know that he got sober for various reasons. Sure, sure. His dad, like, his dad gave him a great reason, several reasons, thousands of reasons that sober was the way to go. Very good. By example of not being sober, I I believe. Are you able to reach out to him in his dreams or? Yeah, he talks to me. He's totally open to that. That's beautiful. All right, I gotta I gotta run. I want to thank everybody for this. Well, do you give him advice? He goes, no. He goes, I ask him for his advice. (laughs) Beautiful. That's beautiful. Thank you, Jennifer, for your talents, your ability. Thank you, Anthony. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Prince. Thank you, Luana. Thank you, Robert Downey Sr. We appreciate all of you guys. And we will catch you on the flip side. Bye. Bye. Bye.